Hello, this is Mr. Bus. The purpose of this video is to walk you through the Cell Size Cube Lab, which is a pretty common AP Biology lab experience and general bio biology as well, which really illustrates the idea of cell size in terms of cells not being uh, too large. Cells are all pretty small, and this lab kind of gets at the why behind that. The way that I organize this for AP Biology is I just wanted to make sure since this is our first lab this year, uh, 2020, that um, you got exposure to what this AP Biology science practices are. So um, I know they're out of order on your document, but questions and methods seemed like, um, even though it's science practice three, seemed like the probably the first thing that we should put on our lab write-up document. So testable question in AP Biology, we're gonna look at what is the rate of diffusion of the NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, which is a basic solution. Uh, we will wear goggles for this lab because of the chemicals that we're using. Even though the solution is gonna be very weak, we wanna make sure we don't get it um, in our eyes, of course. Uh, what is the rate of diffusion? So how fast can sodium hydroxide move through the auger cube? Well, what is an auger cube? All right, here's a, a block of auger that I prepared for you. I, I prepared it making um, uh, using this powder that you can just buy online. It's basically almost like a jello. Um, you heat it, um, add it to water, heat it to boiling, stirring. And then I also added to the blocks that we're using for this class, a pH indicator. And the pH indicator we're using is called phenylphthalein. And so I added a small amount of phenylphthalein because I wanted a color change to occur when the block was exposed to a basic solution. So this was made using uh, purified water, uh, pH of, well, neutral at least, or even sometimes purified water can be considered a little bit more on the acidic side too, the way it reads on a pH meter. So uh, this would be like a pH of six or so. And we're gonna put this in a solution of sodium hydroxide solution, which is a pH of, oh, I don't know, 10, 11, something like that. And it's gonna go through a color change. So how fast, what is the rate of that color change? All right, so we got a procedure. We're going to cut different size cubes, a three centimeter, two centimeter, and one centimeter cube put my goggles on here. All right, and let me zoom in a little bit to that cube. All right. So I actually have two uh, rulers here because the auger is actually pretty easy to cut using a, a ruler as a knife. And so I'm going to make my largest cube first. So I'm gonna measure a three side Okay, and three this way, or because a cube is all sides being equal. And then this way, is that still on the video? Okay. And then I can double check my measurements. Three by three, that's still a little big. Okay, so there's my three by three by three cube. And I'll make a two by two by two and a one by one by one. So you might have some extra stuff going off to the side. And you can do this directly on the lab table too if you want. We're gonna wipe it up later. So I'm, probably going through this faster. Maybe I could have taken more time. They look kind of rough, but there's my three by three by three, two by two by two, and one by one by one. So I'm gonna take these three cubes and expose them to uh, sodium hydroxide. Before I do that, I'm probably gonna clean up a little bit. Um, just gonna wipe this up and then I'm just gonna maybe rinse my hands off, get that auger off of them. Okay, so I'm gonna put the cubes in a beaker. zoom out a little bit. And then the next part of my procedure is to place the cubes in sodium hydroxide for a set amount of time. So uh, running this lab for a few years, eight minutes seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to take um, the, I have prepared some sodium hydroxide solution for you. I'm just going to top it off. So the cubes are 
under this says vinegar but it's it also i labeled it sodium hydroxide on the container there all right so as you can see color change is already occurring and the solution is pink but also the solution is going to be um, going through the process of diffusion diffusing through the cubes and after eight minutes i'm just looking at the time now i will go ahead and uh, remove the cubes and follow the rest of the procedure okay i went a little longer i went about 10 minutes on this i'm going to go ahead and go to the sink and uh, let's see here the video on that and rinse out the solution All right, as you could see, I really wanted to get the sodium hydroxide off of the cubes. I didn't want to bring any sodium hydroxide back to my table. So there's the cubes. All right, now the procedure says to rinse them very well, which I did, dispose the NaOH. Now, uh, cut them in half. So I'm just going to use my ruler again. And I'm going to cut each cube in half. All right, so that is pretty cool looking. Definitely you can see that the largest cube did not go through quite a color change in the center. The middle size cube, two centimeter cube, still a little lighter in the middle, but definitely more color change. And then the small cube, all right, um, went through more of a color change. So. If this were a cell and if it were exchanging um, materials with the environment and maybe soaking up nutrients, this cell would have gotten the nutrients kind of all the way through to the middle of the cell. This cell wouldn't have, and neither would this cell, definitely not this cell. So you could imagine maybe these cells may be dying because they could not uh, function. They could not move materials quickly enough through to all of the machinery of the cell where the smaller the cell was, was able to diffuse in a shorter amount of time and move wastes out and uh, nutrients in. So now a couple measurements you might want to take. We know the di overall dimensions were three by three by three, two by two by two, and one by one by one. Um, might be handy now to measure how far, because our question was what was the rate of diffusion? How far was the diffusion over time? So I went about 10 minutes for this. And for me, it looks like it went about a half a centimeter that's that line, right? A half a centimeter of diffusion of the sodium hydroxide over 10 minutes. You know, same thing here. And then since this is a one by one by one cube, a half a centimeter uh, would have gotten, would mean it would go through to the center of the cube from all sides. So that's why this one went all the way through. So that would be our rate, 0.5 centimeters per 10 minutes. And you can do some math to get that per one minute or per any unit of time. All right, and then the rest of the write up here um, summarize the underlying biological concepts, page 57 to 58 in our textbook. You can go ahead and do that. Um, this is the uh, visual representation. So, this is a good visual representation, maybe even taking a picture with the, uh, the ruler, kind of marking off distance for the rate, those types of things. Um, quantitative data, those are numerical data, right? So um, numbered measurements, the size of the cubes, the amount, rate of diffusion using numbers. Qualitative, qualitative would be obs observations. So talking about the color change. Calculate the surface area for the cubes. Remember that, I'm walking away for a second. We have a, um, this is on Schoology and it's also in the classroom. So we have a surface area and volume formula on, on this equation sheet. And so you can go ahead and use the formulas. We're doing the surface area of a cube 
and volume of a cube, right? Because that was a cube. You can work with other uh, shapes for practicing uh, for a test or something like that. For this lab, it's just a cube. So calculate the surface area and volume, and then the ratio where you put surface area over volume. Number 10, which cube was least effective in exchanging materials with the environment? The large cube was least effective. The small cube was most effective. All right, and then the science practice six, argumentation. Answer the question. Remember, the question is, what is the rate of sodium hydroxide diffusion? What is evidence from your, <laughs> from your lab? And uh, the reasoning. What science do you know that explains what you see? Discuss the property of osmosis or diffusion. Now, we haven't learned about osmosis or diffusion yet, but those should be terms that maybe you've heard before, um, even in middle school science, and you could use page 83 to 84 in Principles of Life to help you with that as well. So finish the write-up and submit it to Schoology. Cell size cube lab, kind of a fun lab to do first, uh, well, first day for us in 2020 of school. Now, this needs to be better cleaned, right? So I mean, it looks like I still see a little liquid in there. I'm going to rinse that off a little better. It doesn't have to be dry, but it has to be rinsed really well. Set off aside. Same with the ruler. Rinse really well. Set off aside. Cubes can go in the garbage. And then we'll spray our tables and wipe our tables off. And then goggles go back in the goggle cabinet, and we'll use the UV light in between classes to sterilize those. All right, hope that was helpful, and have a great day.